This is our Julius Nyerere and supporters mindset sabotage African unity. Are you ready? This is our Julius Nyerere and supporters mindset sabotage African unity. Are you ready? Kwame Nkrumah was a visionary leader who played a vital role in the struggle for African independence and unity. Nkrumah believed that uh, the only way for Africa to overcome the challenges posed by the European imperialism and colonialism was through the formation of a united African state. He envisioned a continent where all African nations would be united under one flag, one president, and one capital, and one government. Nkrumah's vision for united Africa was a bold and audacious idea that aimed to ensure Africa is development and protected against imperialist forces. But during the colonial era, Africa was subjected to various forms of exploitation and oppression by European imperial powers. The continent was divided into artificial states with arbitrary borders that ignore its ethnic and cultural boundaries. These boundaries were created primarily to serve the interests of European colonial powers and not the African people. This division resulted in a fragmented continent with uh, many small and weak states that were unable to defend themselves against imperialist forces. Nkrumah believed that uh, the only way to overcome the challenges posed by, the, uh, by colonialism and imperialism was for Africa to come together as one nation. He argued that African unity would create a formidable force that could protect the continent from external threats and foster its development. Nkrumah believed that uh, African unity was not only necessary, but also inevitable. He believed that uh, the continent's shared history, culture, and struggles provide a strong foundation for unity. In 1963, however, Nkrumah played a crucial role in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, OAU, which aimed to promote African unity and cooperation. The OAU was an important step toward Nkrumah's vision of United Africa. However, the OAU was weakened by internal division and some African leaders were skeptical of Nkrumah's vision for United Africa. Some leaders believed that their country's interests would be better served by maintaining their independence and sovereignty rather than merging with other African nations. Julius Nyerere, the first president of Tanzania, was one of the leaders who opposed Nkrumah's vision of a united Africa. Nyerere believed that uh, African unity was a distant and unrealistic goal. He argued that African nations were too diverse and that uh, their differences would make it difficult to create a united African state. Nyerere believed that uh, each African nation should focus on its development rather than on regional integration, which was a BS. House Negro Mindset Nyerere, his opposition to African unity was a significant setback for Africa and Nkrumah, his vision 
Nayer and Nyerere's view reflected the pre uh, prevailing mindset among many African leaders at the time. And let's change this poor state of mindset, like Nyerere's mindset, because this is what delaying African progress. This is what led Africa into the state of poverty and the chaos we're living in today. But we urgently need to change this course. When you love, respect, and admire white people more than you love and admire your people, that's called madness. I hear the history of uh, some traders and house Negroes, African citizens, that will treat white people like royals and mistreat their fellow Africans inside Africa, prioritizing white people and disrespecting and neglecting their own African brothers and sisters. I ask, um, how is the, how in the hell African government are allowing this type of treatment to happen under their watch? How is this possible? Isn't this a mental illness? How can you mistreat your own African brothers and sister and treat strangers better than you treat your own kind? That's stupidity. Europeans already show, show you that uh, they don't care about you and you will never treat, they will never treat you better than they treat another European. But you still stupidly, clownly put the white person first before you follow your fellow Africans. Those of you that behave like this, you are mad mentally. You need a psychotherapy. You are stupid. You need to be locked in a mental facility. How is it possible to mistreat Africans inside Africa? Not allowing businesses to serve Africans, but only reserving those same businesses inside Africa to serve white people. Are you kidding me? How could uh, the African government allow these restaurants and hotels to operate in Africa. Shut them all out. Find them millions in reparations and charge, them, uh, charge the owner and employee of these businesses with imprisonment up to 40 years in prison for the mistreatment of Africans. That's what the, this government should do. Create laws to force them to change their mentality. Any African house Negro that betray the principle of Pan-Africanism with a xenophobic attitude toward any African citizen should be imprisoned without mercy. This is how we're going to end this type of house Negro slave mentality. Okay? Africa has uh, long been a continent struggling with its identity and self-worth. For centuries, Africans have looked to uh, Europeans for guidance and inspiration. Viewing them as superior being with all the answers to life problems. This mentality has led to a lack of confidence in African abilities and a dependence on foreign aid and assistance. It is time for Africa to stop seeing Europeans as gods and start valuing its own people and resources. The first step toward this change is for Africans to start seeing each other as brothers and sisters. Too often, Africans are divided by ethnic and national boundaries, which only serve uh, to, to, what? to weaken the continent as a whole. The focus should be on the well-being of all Africans, regardless of their nationality or ethnicity. Africans need to prioritize unity and cooperation over competition and division. The continent has a rich and diverse culture that can be used to create a sense of shared identity and common purpose. It is time for Africa to unify under one flag, one nation, and one economy. This will require a shift in mindset, as well as a willingness to work together towards a common goal. The continent has enormous potential with vast natural resources and a young and dynamic population. However, this potential can only be realized if Africans work together to create a strong and united continent. All right? Let's do away with Nyerere's his, his way of thinking. African leaders have a crucial role to play in this process. They need to prioritize the well-being of their citizens over personal gain or interest. 
They need to work towards creating a strong and stable political environment that encourages investment and economic growth. This includes uh, tackling corruption and promoting good governance. African leaders also need to work together to create a common agenda for the continent, one that prioritizes the development of all African nations. Okay, Education is another key area that uh, needs to be addressed. Africans need to, uh, to be educated about their history, their culture, and the potential of the continent. Education can help to break down the barrier that divide Africans and promote a sense of shared identity. It can also help to create a generation of leaders who are committed to, uh, to the well-being of all Africans. Finally, Africans need to stop looking to Europe and other foreign powers like China for solutions to our problems. The continent has the resources and the talent to solve its, its own problems. Okay? We Africans should be proud of our heritage and our achievements and works toward creating a brighter future for the continent. All right? It's simple. It's not hard. In conclusion, Africa has the potential to become a superpower. But this can only be achieved if Africans start valuing ourselves and our resources. It is time for Africans to stop seeing Europeans as gods and start seeing each other, each other African as brothers and sisters that we are. For centuries, European powers have viewed African nations and their people with contempt and disdain. From the slave trade to colonialism, Europeans have exploited Africa as resources and people for their own gain. Despite the end of formal colonialism, Many Europeans continue to treat Africans with disrespect and disregard. Yet, there are still Africans who mistreat each other and treat uh, Europeans as if they are superior. This behavior must stop immediately. If Africa is to move forward as a united and a prosperous continent, we need to stop with this. Africans have a long history of mistreating each other often based on ethnic or tribal differences. This behavior is a vestige of colonialism, which divided Africa into arbitrary borders and created artificial nations. Europeans used divide and conquer tactics to maintain control over the continent, putting different ethnic groups against each other. This led to deep-seated uh, animosity and the mistrust between different African nations and the ethnic group. Right now we see uh, Congo and Rwanda, which persist to this day. However, this mistreatment is not limited to interaction between different African groups. Many Africans view Europeans as superior to themselves, treating them with difference and respect that they do not extend to fellow Africans. They are stupid. This behavior is deeply ingrained and reflects a lack of uh, uh, self-value and confidence in African ability. And Africa must recognize that they are not inferior to Europeans and that they have the potential to achieve greatness on their own terms. Okay? Furthermore, Europeans do not view Africans as equal. This is evident in the way that African Im immigrants are often treated in Europe. Facing discrimination and marginalization, Africans are often viewed as a second-class citizens, inferior to Europeans in intelligence, culture, and value, which is BS. This is a deeply ingrained attitude that reflects centuries of European colonization and exploitation of Africa. It is time for Africans, we Africans, to stop making fall out of ourselves by treating Europeans as if they are royalty and Africans must recognize their own worth and value and treat each other with dignity and respect. This means overcoming the division created by colonialism and working towards 
a common goal of a united and prosper prosperous Africa. All right. Africans must also recognize that uh, we have the potential to achieve greatness on our own terms. Africa has vast resources, a young and dynamic population, and a rich and diverse culture. Africa must use these strengths, like China did, to create a continent that is prosperous, stable, and respected on the world stage. Africans must overcome the legacy of colonialism and to treat each other with dignity and respect. Africa must also recognize our own worth and potential, working toward putting Africans first. All right. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your day.